So when I took the wheel off, I'm not going to show you taking the wheel off. That's just taking the wheel off. It's pretty simple. Um, I always insert kind of a spacer in between the uh, the brake pads while I'm just working around the bike. That way I don't accidentally hit the brake pedal or brake lever and cause the calipers to come in. And so, but first thing is I'll remove that that uh, spacer now. In the brake assembly, there's a cotter pin, like this thing right here. Okay, so there's a cotter pin. Now you need to take a pair of pliers and straighten out the cotter pin so you can pull it out, right? So then just go ahead and straighten out the cotter pin, and then you can pull the cotter pin out. Okay, and then it's just a matter of pulling the brake pad assembly and pushing it out. At this point, okay, so that's the brake pad assembly. Hello, and welcome to Random Things. This is Ty, and for this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the disc brake pads on the Electric X Premium. Now, this is part of my 1500 mile maintenance series. In the first video, I showed you how to measure chain wear and replacing the chain. The second video I actually um, show you what it sounds like and feels like when you actually have freewheel wear um, and then that skipping and then how to change the freewheel and the different types of freewheel. And for those videos, I will put a link in the description box below if you haven't seen those and you want to take a look. Um, but for this particular video, I want to show you a couple of brake pad materials, specifically the semi-metallic versus the organic resin. And then actually how to remove the actual pads itself and then replacing it. It's actually quite simple. Um, and so if you've never done it before and you're a little nervous about it, this video will kind of provide some clarity and give you some assurance that you can do it yourself. And so with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, but real quick, if you do find this video helpful, please hit the like and share button. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That would really help me out. And with that, I'll see you at the wrap up. Okay, here I have the OEM electric brake pads, and these have about 1600 miles, a little over 1500 miles um, wear on them. And here I have three new replacements. This one here is by Dust and it's a semi metallic or centered. This material is actually the material that electric, if you call their customer support, um, they ask you to, they do recommend using the semi metallic replacement pads. Here I have two organic resin pads, um, and these are just as good of an alternative as the semi-metallic. And, and the pros and cons of each is, with the semi-metallic, um, it is harder, and so it will last longer. But it will be harder on your discs, as well as it does tend to squeal. Um, with the organic, because it's softer, it doesn't squeal um, as easily, and it doesn't... Uh, Put a lot of wear on your disc but because they're softer you could blow through them quite a bit faster than the semi-metallic but cost wise four pairs of the dust semi-metallic which i got on amazon was 13.99 and then four pairs of the magiati organic resins four pairs of these were 9.99 so you might blow through them but um they're relatively cheap to replace now, in terms of these, now I have, hmm, right now I have about 1,600 miles, even though this is a 1,500-mile maintenance video. And so it actually doesn't look too bad. I can probably get another 1,500 miles, maybe even more, um, on these old pads. But for the sake of doing the 1,500-mile maintenance video series, um, I decided to pull them just to show you how difficult it is, which is not very difficult at all, to remove the the disc brakes, disc brake pads, and replace them. Um, it's a lot harder than I think people think it's harder, but it really isn't that bad. Um, these pads, one pair, right? You need two pairs front and back tire, and it's going to cost you five dollars in terms of parts, um, five six dollars. And in terms of labor, um, if you are pretty comfortable with your bike maintenance, it shouldn't take you longer than thirty minutes taking me a while because I'm trying to explain things as I go so 
Um, but I really think it would be a pretty fast job if you were just replacing the pads itself. Um, so with that, let's uh, take a look on what it takes to actually remove it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take out the actual brake pad. So when I took the wheel off, I'm not going to show you taking the wheel off. That's just taking the wheel off. It's pretty simple. Um, I always insert kind of a spacer in between the uh, the brake pads while I'm just working around the bike. That way I don't accidentally hit the brake pedal or brake lever and cause the calipers to come in. And so, but first thing is I'll remove that that uh, spacer now. In the brake assembly, there's a cotter pin, like this thing right here. Okay, so there's a cotter pin. Now you need to take a pair of pliers and straighten out the cotter pin so you can pull it out, right? So then just go ahead and straighten out the cotter pin and then you can pull the cotter pin out. Okay, and then it's just a matter of pulling the brake pad assembly and pushing it out. At this point okay so that's the brake pad assembly right so it's got two holes and a little hooky here inside it's actually a metal spring this little spring just sits there like this and then on the other side right that's how it goes on and so when you buy replacement brake pads, it's going to give you a, the metal spring and everything kind of like connected like this with a new cotter pin as well. All right. So just like a car, there are two calipers in the disc brake assembly. There's one, there's the other side, right? And the calipers push in when... You depress the brake now what well, after you remove the pads before you put on the new pads what you need to do is push the calipers back right you want to push the calipers back in so this is typical just like what you would do with a car right you want to push the calipers back in before you put on your new brakes now I've seen people use a screwdriver there's a little tool by park tool company it's, um, it's like a caliper press, a brake caliper press. And it's just a little fat piece of metal that allows you to um, kind of push the calipers back in. All right. So if they're not sticking out too far, you can probably just push it in with a screwdriver. Sometimes they, if you, the reason why you have like this thing here is because if you don't have the actual disc in between the two brake pads and you actually step on the brake handle the calipers can actually pop out too far and there's a kind of a pain to push them back in that's why i put a spacer in there uh, when i'm working on the brakes or when i when i take the wheel out of the fork okay so when you get the brake pads they come kind of zip tied or rubber band together as a whole assembly but if it comes apart it's relatively basic there's a metal bracket a metal spring that kind of fits on the inside on the pad right and there's a hole here and you want to make sure that the hole lines up right and that's where the cotter pin goes through so once you have the pad in on the springs right then you can now the bike is upside down so this part is on the bottom and the hole is upward when the bike is upside down then you just slide the brake pad assembly in into position right then you take that cotter pin and you slide it through that hole and once you slide it through the hole the pad can't push back out right without the pin the pad will push out right so this little dog ear part catches on the bottom right there catches on the bottom right there and then you put the cotter pin through and then once you put a cotter pin through you want to 
pulled one of them up, right, and fold it, so that it won't, it won't uh, slide out. So now the cotter pin won't slide out. So after you put the tire back on, you might have some rubbing. You can hear it in in the tires. You hear that? Okay, so it's rubbing. So the way to adjust it is to loosen loosen these two screws and that'll let you move the brake assembly so that it's not rubbing. And once you have it centered so that it's not rubbing, go ahead and tighten it down. That's it. No more rubbing. Okay, so see the difference between the two different materials um, one's harder but will last longer one is softer won't last as long um, the harder one tends to squeal more if you're especially if there's debris inside your pads and so i actually put the organic resin on instead of the semi-metallic um, these are softer so we'll see how long they last and uh, hopefully they'll last longer than 1500 miles um, so I wouldn't have to change these tires again or the, the brake pads again until over 3,000 miles. So I'll keep you posted on how well these organic brake pads last. But again, at $12.99 for six pairs, you know, if you get to the point where you think it's kind of worn, just go ahead and switch it out. You saw how fast. It's like less than five minutes to do it on the front wheel. The back wheel is a little more complicated because you have a chain. But with the mid drive, it's not as hard as a hub drive motor um, where you have to worry about all those wires and all that stuff. Um, it's just a chain, so it's just almost like a regular bicycle. So once you unscrew it and then the, uh, the secure latches, you have to unscrew those too because there's those latching bolts um, for safety. Remove that, pull the wheel off, and then you see how quickly it is to just straighten out the cotter pin, pull out the cotter pin, slip in, push out the old brakes, slip in the new brakes, new cotter pin, and the wheel goes back on. All in all, I think the job is probably less than half an hour um, at most if you have the right tool and you have some inclination. If you're new to doing bike maintenance, it may take you a little longer than that, but as you get into it, you start to realize, boy, this is really easy, um, and I don't need to drag my bike all the way to a bike shop to get it done. So with that, I hope you found this video helpful. And again, if you did, please hit the like and share button. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. That would really help me out. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next random video.